So the Chargers are coming off a brutal loss that included, amongst other things, Justin Herbert exiting the game. But despite all that, there still was some good coming out of that game, though mostly bad. So let's take a deeper look at all the glass half full and half empty from the Steelers Chargers matchup. Speaking of half empty, I'm still at 1245 subscribers, the same amount I was last video. So if you haven't subscribed yet, help me put a positive spin on that. So let's start with the good stuff from this game, like how the Chargers two young receivers played yesterday. Let them put up gaudy stats. Quentin Johnson had two receptions for 44 yards and a touchdown, while Ed McConkey had three receptions for 44 yards. Those stats are nothing to write home about, but really it's about how they played, and more importantly, how they were utilized. And yes, Quentin Johnson's touchdown was more of a scheme thing, or near that if you get him to bite on the flat, you can make a quick throw to Johnson. Thanks to that headiness from Herbert, Johnson was wide open, so it was an easy catch. But I do think he helped himself a little bit on that one. He did a good job of selling the fact that he was running a lazy clear out route and gave Herbert the right window to get him the ball before the safety came in. Again, most of the credit goes to Herbert on this one, but QJ has definitely showed some improved route running this year. Obviously, he's probably going to see some touchdown regression from this point. He's currently tied for the league lead with three touchdowns, but I can see his role continuing to increase from here, considering he's averaging over two yards per run, which is a solid number. So the eye-popping yardage totals aren't there yet, but there's reason for optimism. Rookie receiver Ladd McConkey also didn't have a crazy day. 44 yards, but on three receptions. But that comes with a caveat because Herbert did exit in the third quarter, and Taylor Heineke threw a total of two passes one of them to the running back. In particular, Ladd really impressed when it came to generating first downs. That agility that he showed in college is showing up in the NFL, and I can see him becoming a third down cheat code with the way he can throw him ball ahead of the sticks and he can make a guy miss on the way to first down. Especially with how hard passing yards are to come by these days, having a guy who can generate stuff on his own is going to be really beneficial down the road. But most of all, what I liked about how QJ and Ladd were both used is that their strengths were highlighted. They're not asking Ladd to win on the boundary, giving him the ball in space and watching him work. Same with QJ. They're giving him the ball where he can see it, not making him run stop routes when his hips clearly can't turn around that fast. So the coaching staff definitely deserves a lot of credit for this. Not to mention, it's interesting to see that without Josh Palmer, you really got a sense of the changing of the guard and the future of the Chargers receiver core. As far as another good aspect of the game, I think the defense needs to be highlighted. I know some people aren't too happy with how Derwin James got another penalty, but that was just one moment in an otherwise good game. And sure, the Steelers scored 20 points on them, and they hadn't really scored much this season. However, the Chargers' D was without Joey Bosa for the game, after he injured himself really early on. Even without Bosa in the game, they still managed to get 8 tackles for loss, and constantly put Justin Fields and the Steelers in tough positions. To further emphasize just how much of a problem not having Bosa should have been, he was graded at a 91 so far through 2 weeks by PFF. This definitely tells me that Jesse Minter knows what he's doing and can scheme things up, and isn't just relying on stars. Obviously, the Chargers don't want to be without him for any extended period of time. Knock on wood. But this is comforting knowing that Jesse Minter can make things work if it's not ideal. Moreover, it's encouraging to see what's happening with Christian Fulton right now. According to PFF, he finished with an 89.9 coverage grade, which is good enough for third among all cornerbacks. And he allowed a total of minus two receiving yards. Pretty good for a guy they just got for absolutely nothing in free agency. Now, let's talk about the bad. And obviously the really bad thing is that Justin Herbert got injured. It wasn't just Herbert too. Like I said earlier, Bosa was hurt and out of the game, and Rashawn Slater also went down, leaving a huge hole left tackle. And it would be pretty hard to argue that the hole left tackle wasn't a big reason for why Herbert left the game, but more on that in a sec. Rookie right tackle Joe Alt was also injured, but his is more of an angle thing and doesn't seem to be long term. The other three big injuries don't appear to be season ending, but don't also seem like the kind of injuries that you can get over in a week. And by week, I mean to emphasize the fact that the Chargers are facing a division rival next week. And by division rival, I mean the Kansas City Chiefs. You might remember them from the last two Super Bowls. And like I mentioned in my preview video, playing Herbert against the Steelers made sense because it was still a conference rival, but, but the Chiefs game is definitely more important. And now they have to possibly face them without Herbert. And even if Herbert plays, he's going to be quite limited and facing another stout defense in the Chiefs, and possibly facing them without Rashad Slater and a hobbled Joel. Who knows if resting him for a game would have made much of a difference in terms of his health, but I don't think it would have hurt. And now the Chargers could be facing a 2-2 two two start after starting 2-0 for the first time since 2012. Here's hoping Ben Herbert could work his magic, finally. 
One bad aspect I want to cover that I haven't seen really talked about much is the job that Greg Roman is doing. And that's not to say the job that he's doing is entirely bad. And if anything, it's been mostly good. The running game looks really stout, even though it wasn't great this weekend. But that had more to do with the fact that they were facing the Steelers, a great defense. And they're going to be pretty effective against most teams in the league. And like I mentioned earlier, I like what he's doing with the receiver so far. But there's one aspect that's lacking, and it really came to a head in this game. As far as offensive coordinators go, Roman just doesn't have a lot in his toolkit. It's just run the ball and play action, dominate in the trenches, so to speak. And there's no doubt that's fundamentally sound good football. The same way that pass happy teams are exposed by being one trick ponies and being easy to be game plan for. You can see the same thing happening with Roman now. Take for example, the play that got Herbert injured, or I should say re-injured. It's a play action play where the linemen are trying to sell the fact that it's gonna be a run play, but the rush isn't picked up and Herbert, because it's a run play, has his back turned to the whole thing and he gets absolutely walloped. On its face, obviously running play action is a good thing most of the time, but you have to be a bit more situational. And in this game, when you're missing your left and the right tackle and you're moving guys around, it just doesn't seem like the smartest thing to do to risk a misassignment from one of your backup linemen and put your star quarterback in a position to get re-injured. And I get running the ball, I'm not against it. Please don't tell me that in the comments because that's not the problem here. Same for play action. These are both great things that you can do. The problem here is Greg Roman is showing that he doesn't have a lot in his toolkit. And then when things go awry, he still goes back to the thing that always seems to work, but it doesn't always work like we saw. And I feel like this is going to be an ongoing concern. Another bad thing stemming from this game is also not completely bad, which is Jim Harbaugh's performance. He's definitely still a lot of toughness in the team, and they were tied 10-10 deep in the third quarter with the Steelers, another good team with another good coach. And I don't blame him for necessarily not being able to pull out the win, Taylor Heineke behind center, and three weeks to prepare. But what I will blame him for is what's going on with the injuries. He came in with a lot of bluster talking about, you know, nutrition and that kind of stuff and bringing in Ben Herbert, who is going to apparently be the next Alex Guerrero, but not sketchy. Some kind of trainer with just the magic touch for injuries. And I'm not doubting the job that Ben Herbert's done. Because who can tell really, because a lot of this has been thanks to mismanaging players, especially in the case of Herbert. Herbert especially has nothing to prove when it comes to toughness. I mean, the guy played with ribs that were essentially Chex Mix. And he's going to go and play no matter what. But Harbaugh has to be the adult in the room. That's what he was brought here for. And these ongoing injury problems are not going to be changed unless there's a serious philosophical shift. And this includes how him and Greg Roman decided to deploy the running game and the pass action game. If you're going to invest a fifth overall pick into a left tackle, who becomes a right tackle, to keep your star quarterback protected, maybe stop putting him into situations where he's going to get hurt. Or at the very least, keep him off the field when it's the right time to do that. Because it's harder for me to justify right now this philosophy if it's still getting Herbert hurt. For as good of a coach as he is, which he is still very good, this is a weak spot. And if the Chargers are going to be contenders, they need to do a better job here. And you as the viewer need to do a better job of liking and subscribing to this video. Thanks again for watching.